A mailbox with a tail? What will they think of next? Blaze! Blaze ran off. Can you help me find him? Uh-huh. He looks just like that dog under the mailbox. I love you too, Blazy Wazy. Yes, I do. But you've got to stop running away. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> you lost him again, didn't you, Proby? He's like a ninja. But I know how he got out. This entire wall of the station is a giant door, and it was open. We close this, and he'll never get out again. Well, we have to train now, Blaze. But we'll play later. Blaze was very bad at staying. What if he got out and ran so far away they couldn't find him? How would someone know to bring him back to the firehouse? Everything in the station had a label to say where it was from. <laughs> Maybe Blaze just needed one of those firehouse labels on him. After a little searching, George found one. He hadn't even made that big of a mess. Well, for a monkey. George headed home, sure his troubles with Blaze were over. Then George thought he heard footsteps again. That was odd. This would help. George could play with Betsy, Steve, and Charky. And Blaze. Blaze? <laughs> Have you guys seen Blaze? Oh, that's why that dog had a fire station sticker on him. Oh, yeah, we've seen him. He, he went, went that way. way. Oh, no. Blaze is really gone this time. <laughs> oh, no. Where was Blaze going now? Blaze is in that truck? <laughs> that's the animal shelter truck. The animal shelter? Oh no, that, that's terrible. That's horrible. Hi, we're looking for our dog. Uh, hang on just one second, please. <clears throat> nope, still a monkey and a fireman together. How can I help you? My dog is here, you, you just brought him in. Ah, come on back. I was worried about you. Yes, I was. Oh, he's very playful. He made a lot of friends already. Even the gerbil likes him. There you go, buddy. A brand new dog tag. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Looks like Blaze found the toy section. <laughs> if Blaze keeps running away, we're gonna need a new fire dog. Or a new proby to watch the fire dog a little better. Don't worry, we got Blaze a dog tag and a leash, and I'll train him to stay. He'll never get out again, I promise. Sounds good, Sam. But right now, it's time for your training. You've got a big test tomorrow. Great, let's go. It had been a long day of dog chasing, but now George could finally relax. Was that Blaze? Nah, couldn't be. Blaze! Ah! George couldn't believe it. Blaze was more trouble than a monkey. Ah! He's too fast, and we're too tired. <laughs> oh, you want to go see your friend? Huh? Blaze came to play with the other dog, and he wanted to play with Charky in the park and play ball with George. George suddenly knew why Blaze kept leaving. George figured out how to stop Blaze from running away by getting another dog. 
Meet Sparky. Great. Now we can lose two dogs. The shelter worker says some dogs do better with a friend. Now, let's go take that firefighter test. I'm ready. And the dogs will both be here when we're done. Right, George? That's right. Oh, you did it. You finished the obstacle course in less than two minutes. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 hang on. You still have to pass the real test. That's right. We have to check and see if the dogs are still here. <gasps> oh, no. Blaze and Sparky are gone. Oh, no. They could be miles away by now. I'm sorry, guys. It was sure nice working with you. <sighs> What? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Congratulations, Proby Sam. And now you're Firefighter Sam. All right! Can't breathe. I'm good. <laughs> Why because? Wow. How'd you like to sail a ship like that, Hundley? <laughs> the neatest ship to ever set sail was the SS Dignified. Its commander was world-renowned, Captain Hundley. No other captain was as smart, as orderly, or had as wet a nose. No one knew how to ride the breezes like Captain Hundley the greatest sailor in the history of wind. But all was not smooth sailing. Oh. A new crewman came aboard during a stop in the dry Tortugas. Oh. New first mate George was a sloppy monkey with a jelly sandwich. put that monkey in the brig and kept his ship dignified. The wind was so strong, the pirates were upon the dignified before Captain Hundley could give orders. The pirates were led by... Yellow Hat the Pirate. He's famous, you know. Hi, how are you? We're uh, taking over your ship because, uh, well, you know, that's, that's what pirates do. <laughs> And that. Arr. <laughs> Come on out and have fun with us. <laughs> George snuck down with something to cheer up sad Captain Hundley. reminded the bold captain how dignified his ship was. George wanted to hang it up where Captain Hundley could enjoy it. Where is that good little monkey? George, are you down here? Oh, my goodness. I mean, R. Wake up. Uh, put on life vests. We're, we're filling with water. Sinking. We, it, we gotta get back to our own ship. <laughs> Intrepid Captain Hundley instantly took control of the situation. The wind's out of the northwest at 30 knots, Captain.
Captain Hundley used the wind perfectly, and they set sail. George! 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 Oh, what's up, boy? Have a scary dream? That was the strangest dream any dachshund ever had. After thinking about sinking, Hundley thought that maybe... If his boat wasn't weighed down with water, maybe it would still float. And it did. So George hadn't ruined his boat. He just sunk it. <laughs> hey, that, that sounds fun, doesn't it, George? <laughs> Say, Hunley, your good pal George is going to come out on the boat with us today. <laughs> At least Hunley knew what to expect, so he was prepared. Fever, stuffy nose, clammy paws. You're definitely fighting a germ, George. Uh, Here you go. See that blob? Uh, That's a germ. Uh, Some germs are good for you, but bad germs can make you sick. Uh, 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 well, that's your body. Your nose, mouth, stomach. Uh, Those are your lungs. Uh, when you sneeze... Yes. <laughs> or cough, that's your lungs squeezing together and trying to force out the bad germs. <laughs> Enough biology. Time for you to rest. George saw a face. A face he had seen before. In the mirror. It was him. George's mouth was amazing. It was like a giant cave. Yeah. A cave with an echo. A squishy floor, which was actually his tongue. Huh? And best of all, yeah? a spaceship. Ooh. Yeah. George was amazed. He didn't know Gnocchi could drive. George knew they were somewhere above his mouth, but where? Yeah. Fortunately, Gnocchi had discovered a helpful sign. They were in George's nose. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm in your nose. He's in your nose. I'm in your nose. Oh, yeah, he's in your nose. I'll make you sniff it out and make you sneeze. You won't be smelling that smelly cheese. Don't be your belly. Don't, don't. Mostly I'm about to so don't eat a thing, that's my suggestion Cause I'll be giving you an ingestion <laughs> Sing it, Jamin Go to the Oh, I like the sound of that Do it again Go to the Yeah <laughs> I love this place Woo Little Hey, Hey, Toots, where you going? To the lungs Oh, yeah, he's in your lungs Well, I'll be making you wheeze and cough You better take the heart we and if you're wondering who to blame Don't forget, Toots the name Cause we'll be making you sweat and squirm Cause that's our job Cause we're germs yeah. Cause we're germs That was the germ that was making George sick Well, hey, you're a strange looking germ Toots is my name these here singers are the Germans. George explained that he was the owner of this body, and Toots and the Germans would have to go. Go? Why should we go? We like it here. <coughs> I'm making you feel sick? Oh, well, in that case, I'll be on my way. I I'll just uh, get my stuff. 
<laughs> Fool you! I'm never leaving! George knew he wouldn't feel better until he got rid of Toots. <laughs> but where did he go? <laughs> the lungs? <laughs> it looked kind of wet. Was this the lungs or was it the stomach? Maybe they made a wrong turn somewhere. So don't eat a thing that's my suggestion, because I'll be giving... <gasps> So where should we go next? Uh, the throat? Hey, maybe the ears. You're awake. How do you feel? George felt great. He could even smell again. <laughs> you seem much better. <coughs> I wish I could say the same. <laughs> oh, thank you, George. That song was very familiar. Where was it coming from? Hiya, George. Hey, you want to try some delicious made out of apples that I picked myself, apple cider? <laughs> Do you want a whole bottle? <laughs> That'll be three fifty, please. Why don't you and Allie make a trade? That's what we used to do when we were kids. Yeah. Ta -da! Mm, I like it, but I don't want to trade for a stick. Oh. I like the cart, though. George wasn't sure he wanted to give up his new cart. But then again, that cider was delicious. Now, just remember, kids, once you make a trade, it's for keeps. We know. <laughs> and was missing his cart. There were so many fun things he could be doing. No! Like playing hide and seek. Or carrying a pet fish around. But the cart was gone. Unless he could trade it back for something. You want me to trade the cart for a jar of sauerkraut? Mm, no, I'd rather have the cart. I'm kind of using it. George was in luck. He had seen a pony just like that over at Vicky's house. You want to trade a jar of sauerkraut for my pony? No, thanks. Except maybe a dollhouse. George didn't have a dollhouse. Allie had a dollhouse, though. If George could trade something for the dollhouse, then he could trade the dollhouse for the pony and trade the pony for the cart. George. 
Like my cart? Allie traded it to me for an old backpack. <laughs> you want to trade that pony for the cart? <laughs> mm, no thanks. I need this to help me carry stuff to the swap meet. A swap meet is where lots of people gather in a big space and trade stuff. You should come, it's fun. Who knows, you might find something I would swap the cart for. Oh, this is great, George. I'll bring all the stuff I want to get rid of. Oh, no, no, that's the keep pile. That's the get rid of pile. The next day, George hoped that between his sticks and the man's stuff, they'd have something that Bill would trade for. Hmm, got it. Oh, need it. Yeah. I like her sombrero, though. Oh! <laughs> you want to trade the sombrero? Sure. <laughs> you want the cart? <laughs> it's a deal. Oh, wait. I just traded it to Mr. Quint. <laughs> Well, that's a dandy fishing reel, but unfortunately, I just swapped the cart with my brother for this singing whale. Forty-nine tons of krill on the wall, forty-nine tons of krill. No! George found Mr. Quint's brother, Flint, but Flint had traded the cart to his other brother, Wint, for a back massager. Wint had traded the cart to Mrs. Rankins for some soap on a rope. Ah. And Mrs. Rankins had traded the cart to Vicky. <laughs> Sorry, George. I just traded the cart to some people from the city. George had worked so hard to get that cart back, and now it was gone for good. There's nothing here that I want. See, I'm an artist. I work with wood, and what I'm looking for are unusual sticks. <laughs> well, these are the best sticks I've ever seen. Thank you. <laughs> At last, George had a cart. Of course, he no longer had anything to put in it, but that wouldn't last long. George hoped his special cold-fighting little bit of everything soup would make him feel better. George, I wouldn't do that if I were you. That spoon was just in my mouth. It probably has cold germs on it. See, germs are too tiny to see, but they're inside me. And cold germs are what made you sick when they got inside you. <laughs> but all that cooking had made him one sleepy little monkey. George had just fallen asleep when he heard a strange sound. <laughs> George remembered the last time he and Yoki had flown around in a spaceship. He had become very small and had flown all around his own body. <laughs> what a big mouth. George wanted to explore, but there was no time. He had germs to find. George knew that germ. It was Toots. He and his friends had made George sick before. Now they were playing a concert in the man's stomach. We are. I'm coming to you. I'm coming to your town. Look out. I'm coming to your town. That's right. Welcome, germ, to the... Hey, you're no germ. You're that meddling monkey. 
Watch out for the mucus. The jam could get stuck in that stuff. <laughs> See ya, monkey. We're off to play in more people until the entire world has heard of Toots and the Jam Match. <laughs> But ah. Woo! We're saved! Get ready! <sighs> I'm coming! Uh. Here we go! Sorry to disturb you, but, but they, they need, need your, your signature. signature. George knew that voice. Oh, my fossil! Thank you! Do you have a pen? Sure! Uh. Quick, follow me! On to the pen! <laughs> Where did those germs go? <gasps> Here you go. <laughs> this didn't look good. Here we go. Now what was that word? Hmm. That's it. Put the pen in your mouth. Put this in your mouth. Huh. They were going to infect Professor Wiseman. They had to distract her. Shoo shoo. Ah, oh, yes, cat. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> See you, monkey. Toots was heading towards Professor Wiseman's mouth. <laughs> but George found a shortcut. Well, I've got just the thing to help you feel even better. Homemade chicken soup. This is it. We'll go right back to the big guy. Then we'll have ourselves a real jammy party. Cause I'm a rambling jerk. It looked like there was no way to stop Toots. But then, George remembered something. <laughs> Ooh, feels like something's crawling on my hands. How odd. I'd better wash them. No, no, no. Wait. Don't wash your hands. Whatever you do, please don't wash your hands! No! George knew that there were still other germs out there. But at least he had made his building a tiny bit safer. When George woke up from his strange dream, he decided to go check on the man right away. But there was something he had to do even before that. Wash his hands. And his feet, after all. You can never be too careful. Thank you. Goodbye, George. <laughs> George, I can't pay you for things I usually do myself. That's why I wouldn't let you brush my teeth. <laughs> but here's a 20 cent advance on next week's allowance. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty six. Oh, 
how could George earn more money? There's always work for a good pasta detangler. I love this monkey. Piggy was heavier than ever, but he wasn't full yet. How else could George earn money? Giorgio. He's trying to earn money to buy a boat, but nobody seems to appreciate his music. I think I can make everybody happy. These are quarters, George. Each one is the same as 25 pennies. Ooh. Oh 25, 50, 75, 100 pennies, eh? And that equals one dollar. Oh. <laughs> now why don't we open your bank and see if a pig's worth of pennies is enough to buy the boat you want. <laughs> I know how to get your money out. Let's go to my house. With Piggy's help, George had saved his money. Now, his big dream was about to come true. Here you go, George. <laughs> this is the kind of Piggy you have to break open. It's so you won't be tempted to spend your savings. Okay, we'll think of another way. Okay, go, George! the clothes dryer, the coins would shake out. <laughs> but it may break it, too. Well, Sharky solved the how to open Piggy problem. Well, it's eight dollars exactly. You have enough for your boat, plus three dollars left over. <laughs> George had his boat. <laughs> but he was going to miss Piggy. That's one dollar, and you have three. Any idea what you'll save for this time, George? so he can be with his family. Yeah. Honey, Sally just cracked a tooth and 
I have to take her to the vet. You want to come? Sorry. I'm in the middle of rescuing a fish. <clears throat> oh, well, I don't think Sally can wait. All right. Well, I'll come back as soon as I can. <laughs> Looks simple enough. Good. Fill your bucket, and you can start over there. Where's... where's my bucket? Ooh, ooh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> if only there wasn't so much dirt, the fish could swim to the big lake all by himself. All done. Excellent. Hand me the shovel and I'll dig out this one. <laughs> oh, it wouldn't be long now. As soon as the path was finished, the fish could swim back home. He did it. No more fish could get swept through. Oh. If George was willing to sit there for the rest of his life. George needed something to stop that water fast. has watertight gates on each end. This is the big lake, and this is the small pond. You pull up the gate on one end, and the water in the middle goes to that level. Ah. At least one gate is always closed, so the water in the middle stays where you want it. <gasps> no matter how exciting he made it look, the fish wouldn't go. Maybe fish like cheese sandwiches as much as little monkeys. <laughs> oh, well, you uh, already ate your lunch, huh? No, I... I... Uh, when did I eat my lunch? Yeah. Say, did you, uh, take the paddles? Huh. I always leave them on the seat. I... I don't know. Listen, something very peculiar is going on around here. You're telling me. Believe me, I am normally a very organized and unforgetful <laughs> man. I... <laughs> oh, I should have known. Looks like I'm the forgetful one. I forgot how much mischief a monkey can make. Well, what have we here? It looks like a fish canal. You are some smart monkey. <laughs> I'm back! And we saved Sally's tooth! Did you save the fish? <laughs> George had saved five fish. Wow, that's great, George. Wait, the lonely fish is still there. <laughs> <laughs> We should just chase him. Nice job.
job, everyone. Well, we've accomplished quite a bit today. A fish rescue and a dock repair. Only one thing left to do. Go swimming! Last one in is a rock fish egg. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, George. <laughs> That's terrific. It looks just like Jade. Take a look. <laughs> yeah, Professor Wiseman and I rescued her when she lost her jungle home. <laughs> look, she's changing color. Ooh. Chameleons can do that. See, she's usually green like her jungle surroundings, and that's why we named her Jade. But under the sun's rays, she got warmer, and that made her change color. Watch. Chameleons change color when the temperature changes. <laughs> anyway, today Jade will get a new home at the zoo. That is, if I can convince Dr. Chroma that she's the kind of rare chameleon he's been looking for. Hey, do you want to feed Jade while I'm gone? Great, her food's on the table. Uh, just drop in a few pieces and she'll do the rest. Thanks, George. Bye-bye. Jade had an amazing tongue. Huh? George had left the cage open. Squeaky would lure Jade back to her cage. All he could do now was wait, quietly. Maybe George could keep track by tracking her tracks. <laughs> Hundley didn't know what George was up to. Whatever it was, it wasn't clean. George's plan had worked. Jade's tracks went right out the door. <laughs> they found the wagon, but Jade was gone. And now she had a million places to hide. Hi, George. Oh, what happened here? Oh, boy. Hey, Jade. Well, I don't know where George went, but I have to get you to the zoo. I can't be late for Professor Chroma. <laughs> Maybe Jade liked to be warm. Maybe that's where George should look. <laughs> Was there a warm place that George had missed? <laughs> George had to do was put Jade back in her cage. Huh? The cage was gone. <coughs> that meant that the man had taken Squeaky to the zoo instead of Jade. <coughs> hey, George, what's the rush? <coughs> uh, sounds exciting. Well, hop on. The man with the yellow hat had just finished telling the dramatic story of Jade's rescue. And now I would like to examine Jade. If she is the rare chameleon that you say, then, and only then, can she stay. Well, of course. <coughs> uh, 
squeaky. What was that sound? What? The squeak? Oh, um, hey, let's all go to lunch, huh? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm starving. The chameleon, please. Show me the chameleon. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> George? Hiya. Let me see. Hmm. Oh, oh. Well, that's... Oh, perhaps... Yes! This is the chameleon we've been hoping for! Oh, welcome, Jade, to the zoo. 